Okay. So let's start off this talk with a small activity. So I request all of you all to just close your eyes for a few seconds. Just for a few seconds. And imagine. Imagine you have a gift. This gift mostly helps you make the right decisions. Those decisions which could ignite a movement, which could press that reset button for your life and help you meet all your life expectations for yourself. But this is what we have with us. <laughs> now what if I tell you it is possible? It is possible to meet all your life expectations that you have for yourself just by getting those multiple choice questions right. This could rewrite your future. The simple art of decision making and following your heart by just asking ourselves three questions. What, why and how. Thereby designing destiny. Good morning everybody. This is Neera Ravi here with you today. I'm an architect, a wedding designer and most importantly a heartfulness practitioner. Now, I was in the third year of architecture school when I co-founded the wedding designing studio, The Dream Team. Many of you may ask, if I was studying to be an architect, what made me branch into weddings as a profession? Why did I make this choice? Every single moment from the day I could actually remember has led me to this path. I was quite fortunate to be raised in a very unrestrained way particularly for my real interest to manifest naturally. So I wasn't curtailed much when I was growing up. Mainly, the dogmas of other people were never let to shadow my own. I used to love pretty things. Anything that I see pretty, I used to love it. And I used to have a habit of collecting a lot of pretty things, especially as I walked down the road, and I used to save them. The castles that came in Disney movies fascinated me. And I used to imagine spaces for what they could be rather than what they are. Imagination was my biggest superpower. So when the time came for me to decide what course it is that I wanted to do, architecture was the obvious choice for me. So my path was all set and my plan was laid out. I would start architecture school and I would study for five years to be an architect. After graduating, I would join an architectural firm preferably to gain good experience of how the field works. And after gaining experience, I would go into business of my own someday. But I did go to architecture school. And when I was in college, I realized that what I was learning in college was merely just the tip of the iceberg to how the real world worked. Now, I was very curious by nature. Being curious, I wasn't okay with this. I wasn't okay knowing that there was so much of learning left for me to do and I could do it. So I decided to start working alongside architecture school. The brainstorming began. The first few thoughts that naturally came to my mind were the things that fascinated me when I was growing up. This gave good shape to what I wanted to do. Giving life to all those things that I grew up embracing intrigued me to make those movies a reality and in my own way to contribute to happily ever after. This gave birth to the dream team as the name suggests. Now being Indians by birth, working alongside college is a very uncommon concept to grasp. We're taught from a very young age that it will distract our minds from studies. But let me give you a tip. Instead of differentiating both, linking them together helps me look at weddings as a temporary interior installation. So I linked my work and my studies. So I was bridging the gap between how a space could be versus how a space is. One of the weddings that we designed also later went on to be called Fairy Tale Wedding of the Year. So I was contributing to the field of design which was the very basis of what I resonated with. Looking back at my journey, 
two points were very clear to me. It is very important to be aware of your preferences. Not only be aware of your preferences, embracing them with confidence can help you a long way. This will answer the question, what part it is that you want to take in your future. The second thing and the most important thing is knowing that abundance is not choice. Yes, we do live in a very civilized society. Yes, we're exposed to a lot of global opportunities. And yes, we want to do it all. But staying true to those choices that you resonate with the most, without being carried away by the abundance society has to offer, will answer the question why you want to take a particular path. It can, be a, it can be a professional path, a spiritual path, or a personal path. Now coming to the game-changing question, how? There are many things in our life that we do subconsciously. We go to school to get educated, we go to college, or we go to work. And if anyone asks us how we made these decisions, it just seems like the most obvious thing to do at that point of time. But what if you don't know what the obvious next step is? So I did something. I sat myself down and reanalyzed all the subconscious decisions I've made in the past to formulate the same way for my conscious decisions in the future. I noticed the pattern. And knowing this pattern will help us make decisions even when we don't know what the next step to our path is. Breaking it all down. Now when we're asked to make a decision, there are two distinct filters inside us which the decision has to go through. The first filter is what we're taught to do. So let's call this the old-fashioned dance. <laughs> now right from the day we've been born, we've been accustomed to think a certain way. So this old-fashioned aunt inside us represents society, parents, and circumstances. We didn't choose this for ourselves, but one day we just woke up and we found ourselves on this path laid out for us. We're told the rules of life and the things we have to do in order to survive, what our goals should be. Our job is just to succeed on this path that we've been placed on and not to question it. Slowly, we're being evaluated based on this. I'm sure all of you here have come across that one person who sits us down for a long period of time to give us a long lecture about how life is actually supposed to go on like, while you're sitting there totally zoned out because you know what they're saying is at least a few decades outdated. <laughs> now coming to the second filter inside us. This is what we want to do. So let's call this the progressive path maker. All of us has a progressive path maker inside us. When we're young, we're often questioned about what we want to become when we grow old. And the answers would keep changing from time to time, depending on our newest fascination at that time. When I was four years old, I wanted to become a model, because I was awestruck by my Barbie doll's glamour. When I started going to school, I wanted to become a teacher. When I watched Disney movies, I wanted to become a princess. But by the time we finish college, our interests are more streamlined and we have a quaint idea about what it is that we want to do in our future. Yes? Okay. So this progressive path maker inside us represents the different things that we want to do in our lives at different points of time. Now these two characters dominantly coexist inside us until one day we're pushed into the real world and asked to make something of ourselves. Then, the whole system is in chaos. So back then, even if you wanted to do something, it didn't really matter. Because we already had a preset path laid out in front of us, and all we had to do was just act the path. We had to wake up, we had to go to school or college, be a student, come back, do your homework, see, and sleep. But the good news is, this preset path almost gets over when you finish college. But the bad news is, 
After almost two decades of being used to a preset path, you suddenly ask to make one of your own. Like choose a career or get married. You know all those important decisions which embark the milestones of one's journey. Then the whole system is in chaos. And say after a lot of thought, you come up with what it is that you want to do. Now before the decision goes out into the world, it has to go through these two filters that you have inside you. Say, you choose the nature of job that you want to do. And you happen to be a girl. There's that immediate reflex voice of that old-fashioned aunt inside us telling us, if you don't get married now, all those good proposals might just slip away. And say, you do choose to get married to the person of your choice. That's the same old-fashioned aunt inside us, prompting us. All these things happen only in movies. Or, what will others think of you? That's when the progressive fastmaker jumps in. If Meghan Markle can turn that picture of herself into reality sitting outside the palace against all the royal odds, I'm sure my chances are high too. <laughs> and if Priyanka Chopra can get engaged to a man, who's 10 years younger than her. I'm sure anything is possible. So, we have the old-fashioned aunt, who's conventional and a bit more principled in her thinking, which worked out great for her, because the choices that she had to make then were very conducive to her environment. But the progressive pathmaker just doesn't get that way, because we live in a civilization that we're constantly trying to catch up with. We just want to choose wisely from the ocean of things there is to do, to earn our bread, doing what satisfies us the most, and work towards setting up a good lifestyle for our future family life, irrespective of the gender. And this is when there's an overlap. Because it turns out that these two actually agree on a few things, like getting educated, going to work, getting married, having a family. So the general principles of life passed on to us by our older generation causes this overlap. And the other times, there's a conflict. There's a conflict when it comes to the way we go about these principles, like the career choices that we make, or the way we go about our family life. So it's safe to say that we actually fall under the grey zone, where we're constantly trying to bridge the gap between what is taught to us and what we want to do. While we follow the general framework of life that's passed on to us, our everyday life choices vastly vary. Well, let's face it. None of us are Meghan Markle or Priyanka Chopra. So how do we really bridge this gap? It turns out that these two have a mutual friend. The lifeguard, which forms the very base of our existence, the heart. And this heart tells us that not much is different between the both of us, as we're all wired the same way, and there's the same organ pumping blood inside us. But what has changed is the circumstances outside us, causing us to express ourselves differently, to adapt to this fast life, to learn, to grow, to survive. Follow your heart is a common phrase which I'm sure all of you here are quite accustomed to hearing. And there are great examples of people who did so, like Steve Jobs. But while we hear this phrase so common, so often, nobody actually tells us how we can go about this process. Say you're faced with a situation, and you have to make a decision. We often turn to ourselves for some kind of reassurance, assuming that the inner voice would magically appear, reply, and guide us. Well, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but there is really no such thing. The funny thing about the heart is that it doesn't give us a signal when we're going the right way or the natural way. But say my eyesight goes bad, I immediately feel like there's something wrong. But on a day when I'm seeing normally, my heart doesn't congratulate me saying, Meera, you're seeing normally today, congratulations. <laughs> so when we don't get a signal from the heart, how do we go about our decisions with confidence? During these times, it's very important to pause and ask ourselves these three important questions. The first one, 
Am I a 100% satisfied with my decision? The second one, is my decision harmful to my fellow beings? And the third one, the most important one being, do I have any doubts when it comes to my decision? And whenever there's even a 1% doubt, the answer has always been no. And during these times, the lightness that you have will be replaced by the heaviness of difficulty in envisioning yourself in that situation, forcing things to go a certain way, and lastly, compromising your true nature. This typically translates that I'm just not feeling right about that feeling. And if any of you are in such situations, now is a good time as any to make that change. Now before I go, I'd like you all to close your eyes again just for a few seconds. And imagine today to be the last day of your life. Today is all you ever have to do everything you've ever dreamed of doing. To tick all those unticked to-do lists. To reset your life and to take that path you've always dreamed of taking. Are you doing what you should be doing? Thank you.